Microphone check and screen share check, please. All righty. Good evening, guys. Kind of Tortoise Capital Nightly Strategy Podcast for Friday night, March 25th. So we'll do a quick run through the daily closeout and then uh, look at the weekend reports. Just a quick check in from the Creativity 101 course. Um, uh, Mark came back and revisited a lesson, which I think is best practice, and noticed that the second bite at the apple helped him see his own creativity in a new way. And now a couple months into taking that course, he's now starting to see his old assumptions about his own creativity uh, are reversing. And that he's understanding that even though he's analytical and data oriented, dare we say a computer geek, there is creativity inside that structure. And it's just, I just notice it when you come, you keep coming back to the well, you get deeper and deeper and you find it. Um, Dustin also had some very good experiences with it going through. This was just one of those uh, check on learnings uh, at a, certain point in the course to say, hey, how are we doing so far after the first lesson of six, each lesson having multiple activities. Um, so uh, seems to be working. The Creativity 202 course follows that uh, and is really powerful. Um, let's take a look at a couple events first. First one I want to do is the, um, I want to look at the WMB3. All right, so here we have the, oops, here we have the, uh, the open. So it starts because of the, uh, the strong move up, it never, it never gets to the uh, oversold condition oversold conditions. Here's the overbought conditions. Uh, there is some uh, reason to believe that, uh, you know, if, if you've got this as your minimum manageable risk box, which is normal, and then at the open, you get a, you get a frog move that uh, the standard hybrid frog gets that entry and that move pretty nicely. So you don't have to make the WMB3 the workhorse on everything. However, I would notice that if you're looking at the, if you're trying to make a case, you could say that's where it was uh, sold off the day before. And then on the gap up, you have the recrossing of the uh, overbought conditions, and then you could find the uptick, and then that would get you in here. But then just a simple frog box off the bottom or an MMRB off the bottom would get you into an entry right around here anyway, and uh, like a, uh, another former morning hook. But we, I wanted to be strict on the uh, criteria for WMB3. Lest there be any doubt. All right, so we're, what we're doing now is we're stalking, waiting to see the, um, Williams percent R line get below the oversold line. Here's where that happens. So you wouldn't naturally think of that as uh, just from price action as being the um, oversold conditions. You would think, well, it's just holding support here. So I've gone ahead and marked off where that support is holding. So now that this has, um, let me zoom in a little bit more. Uh, so now that we've had the oversold conditions, uh, I read up to the MACD histogram. And now I have to wait for you know, the next bar to close to find out if the next bar over is going to have an uptick on MACD. 
right? So, um, so I don't, we don't know anything yet. Okay, that bar closes. It did not make an uptick. So there's no entry in here. Interestingly, the double bottom holds. So now we have to wait for the next price bar to open and close, which it does. Uh, so now when this close, when that bar closes and we have an uptick, then what we can do is go up to this bar, find the high of that bar, and then put a, uh, a breakout entry above that. And then if the next bar opens and goes through that green line, then we're going to get an entry by the green dot. So that's, that's how we get that sequential uh, set of conditions. You'll also notice that this is already uh, a one, two, uh, this would have been a one, two, three entry in here, but essentially what we're getting is a one, two, three, four, just because the way price unfolded. So we get the entry here because we broke through that green line. Uh, I'm, I would not be offended if you use the standard risk box from over here and made that your risk box and just carried that straight across. I would also not be offended if you used uh, that line uh, as your as your one hour loss. So I could even live with the red line as the one hour loss and then take the execution at the two bar low if it comes out of that minimum manageable risk box. And you can see already that you're only going to take a 0.5 hour loss if that gets hit. Let me uh, check or hold. Tell me if you see that. So now my job is how soon can I get to no lose plus dinner for two? Um, if this is my plus one R box, then somewhere up in here, I got to be thinking about getting to uh, no lose plus dinner for two by that time. To lock in the half. <clears throat> yeah bill i saw the first one that you put in there um it had like 50 trades did you put another histogram in i just i just did one of the trades out of there but i put the histogram in all right okay say again I only put in, I only marked up one chart unless you want me to mark up more. No, that's all right. All right. So here we are. Uh, now we've had like two price bars above the one R and it had higher closes and four higher lows. I would not be offended if you decided at this point to raise your stop uh, either, either from from the bottom of the yellow box to raise it up to here, or if you were using the wider stop to move it up to there. So no matter where your stop was, in my opinion, uh, this would be a good play. Everybody see that? So you've locked in half the gain of your yellow box risk. So you can decide what you know what you want to do on it. By this time, you know what I mean. And if you were going to do that, you might as well. You might as well just buy it and put that there because why not?
happy, happy, joy, joy. And now it's a science project. Now it's your job. Okay, out. <laughs> that, was that was easy. So one, two, three. Three R and that second trade pays and the slop that's in there is kind of a scratch and pays for the commission. So that's three R. <clears throat> now what I'm gonna notice is the uh, the percent R was above the overbought conditions and has now dipped underneath. So if I'm going to use the Cotta 2 flavor of this, now if this thing resumes, then I'm going to run up and look at for an uptick on MACD in order to then try to get a re-entry up in here. That's if you want to do that. <coughs> or you could just wait, <coughs> excuse me, or you could just wait for the, uh, you know, the genuine full oversold conditions if you want. Or you could get 3R and go golfing. You could do that too. It's my understanding people like to golf. I don't understand them. So if you were of the inclination to do the uh, the resumption of the, that's like a Cotta 2 entry in this WMB3 series. So I would, I would find when it crosses back over into over bot conditions, I would then run up to here and say, ah, there's the uptick. So I can now run up to this bar and then set my little uh, entry above the breakout and then that would give me an entry around um, let me clear this out of the way that would give me an entry around the green dot then if i'm using the standard risk box for execution uh, i would be something like that uh, if i wanted to respect the uh, that swing low, I might use that as the one R and use the yellow box as a half R. You decide what you want to do. So we would get an entry around that green dot. By this time, you might just have decided to do that lock in a fraction, don't lose money. Two bar low or a one bar low, you decide. I'll take a two bar low. Now I take that as a as a favorable sign right there. Let me uh, zoom in on that a little bit more because we can. So now I'm uh, one kind of two wrist boxes in hand and pushing near the top, uh, when I see that, uh, I automatically want to just, uh, I, I just want to do that and take half the, uh, take half the second box. So I've locked in the full first box, if you will, and then half of the second box. You decide. I want you to suffer. And I'd be happy 
to take that exit for one and a half. So if we're keeping score at home, four and a half. So now my job is to watch for, well, this thing never even really dipped underneath the overbought. So, you know, technically I could buy a resumption or I could wait to see the oversold and then start up the new series. Okay, it's now come through uh, <clears throat> from overbought and the MACD is starting to slope downwards. I don't even have to be looking at price on this. In fact, that's probably a good idea not to. Ah, here we go. So now I'm over oversold. So now I can read up on the following the blue arrow or the blue line. I can read up and I see that's where the MACD is. So now I have to wait for the next bar to close in order to determine if we have an uptick. We do not. It's still falling. We do not. It is still falling. We do not. It is still falling. Isn't this nice not having to worry about price? Ah, it upticked, it uptack, uptuck, it upticked. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go up to where that bar closed. And then I'm going to buy a breakout above that. So here we go. Let's see what we got. Well, that's nice. I avoided all that extra crap, all that, all that downward pressure. So now what I'm going to do is I find this bar I find his high right there. I'm probably going to use that. And uh, so those are like my two choices uh, for an exit. The green dot is representing where the, uh, where that breakout is going to be. It's going to be something like right up in here. Yeah. So now I can buy a candle breakout, check or hold. Oh, I'm sorry. 10. Percent R10. The default that uh, Danny has been using is 14. The default that the world uses is 14. But because I use a 10 day look back on the swing trades and compute to the 10 day high, I default to a 10 period percent R. So now I'm long at the green dot. And then you could decide uh, where you want your, um, uh, where you want your stop at the, you know, below that swing low or right at the structured uh, MMRB swing low or the MMRB low. So you decide which one of those you want. You could use the lower red line as your one R stop. I, I kind of like the, um, just using the yellow box because I always have a standard position size anyway. You might even use two times the MMRB for position sizing purposes so that even if you took a full yellow box loss, it would be 0.5. Ah, you could do three times that so that a yellow box loss would be minus 0.3. You get to decide. 
how much of the portfolio you want to risk. What makes you feel comfortable and relaxed with the size of the losses? Some guys can just handle one hour losses routinely. Other guys like me like to take 0.3s or 0.5s. Second one right there, I probably just take that and just say, you know what, that's like a, uh, I had one higher move, sold off, the, the second leg up didn't even get that high and is already starting to fail. I might just take that one there for, for such a fraction um, that, that I don't care. Your call. So you decide where you want to take the loss. We'll call that a one-hour loss. So now what we have is, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, we came to a, a, a notice how on that one, the upward move is so weak, it never even got above the over bought conditions right so now we notice with our exit we exited into overs when it's in oversold conditions that's why to me like the earlier exit wasn't bad because that thing just didn't work we were five bars in and it hadn't done anything was starting to get weak so just get out so now i have uh i have an over sold condition i'm going to come up here and look for the overbought uh, i'm sorry, the uptick i should say sorry I'm tired we do not yet have an uptick we do not have an uptick we have an uptick so now i can read up and now I'm going to place a, a breakout buy above the bar that just closed. All right. So you see the green line? That would be where, not, not this one. We'll get that out of the way. So I'm looking for a breakout above that of that bar it almost looks like a one, two, three, four. And then I would not be offended if you used that as your stop, or you might just use once again, our standard risk box. And that's pretty close. So the yellow box isn't bad and just call that one R. Why am I making it so hard? All right, so I don't get an entry. It did not break out above there. So I just keep the entry and the trade frame in place. I get the entry on that breakout. Check or hold. So you just buy it. I'm not offended if you do that. By the time it breaks above the blue line, I have to get to no lose anyway. I'll take that trade. Fractional win.
come back and now I'm stalking the overbought. Notice when we're coming out of the lunchtime. So there is my um, over oversold condition. I come up and check. Do I have an over? Do I have an uptick? I do not. Do not, do not, do not, do not, do not, do not. Oof. Now I do. So here we go. We're going to go up and we're going to place a, uh, a buy above the bar that just closed. So that's that green line right there. Hard to see. So my entry is going to be above that green line. Check or hold. So I get my uh, I get my entry right there. Everybody see that? I wouldn't be offended if you just put a stop below this uh, below this little shelf, which also happens to be the pure one R breakout box, right? It would be really nice if this thing could just break above all of this. That would be awesome. So now my, my next job is to, uh, how soon can I get my stop to no lose? I'm getting pretty close already. Yeah, by this time, I probably, I got to be at least here. I might be at the two bar low. I might just move it to here. And just buy another one. What the heck? You don't have to. You might. I'll let you decide. Uh, I'm not going to do that. Yeah, my brother bought one here. If you do that, you better be about here on a two bar low now. Come on, dummy. Something like a two bar low. You end up getting an exit somewhere in that in that blob. So the uh, the trades on that sequence that you got out of that series, you got uh, you got this one which was three R. You got that one was one and a half. Uh, this was probably a one hour loss frac oops uh, fractional win on that one uh, one two two and a half on that one so that's a seven minus one that's a six hour day in XOP on the three minute bars six hour day XOP I can't make it any simpler than that. Although I will continue to try. 
All right, so here we are. Here is a uh, start of the day. Hope you guys don't mind doing these early before we get into the weekend reports. Just want to kind of get the training out of the way. All right, so. This is the uh, this is the market open right here. This is where the VWAP closed, and this is where price closed, and this is where price opened. So I take this uh, MMRB risk box. I come up here, and then I straddle, I straddle the opening with that box. Uh, I notice about, uh, we're now about six minutes in, around one minute charts here, that it opened, sold off to the edge, but didn't break the MMRB box, nice, reversed and crossed above the VWAP. It gives me a one, two, three entry at two, if you want it. Uh, I could decide to buy it right now at three if you want it, or I could wait to four for the breakout of the MMRB box. So tell me where you want to enter, two, three, or four, if you want to go long. And then tell me where you want your stop. If you're, I see Eddie, you're entering at three. And then you guys decide on your own where you want to where you want to enter uh, and then you tell me is your stop five at the one bar low six which is tucked just under the previous that little vwap shelf or seven is the low of the day which is the full uh mmrb away from the top of the box right because that's that would be a breakdown and then it would be imply that we're going to get a return to yesterday's price range and maybe even yesterday's VWAP. So if this thing fails, if you're going long and then this fails, you tell me is your exit at five, six or seven. And then what are your targets? Uh, this target here is the PSAR and the skin of the dragon. Uh, this one is a return to the Bollinger Band mean. This one is a return to yesterday's VWAP. This one is a return to the rising RL270 slope. And that's sort of the projection. As long as this thing is north of the 270 and the 270 is rising, then it's still going to be generally, you know, pretty good. So I kind of look at the 270 as the last gasp of a desperate man. Right. Uh, or it could go to the, uh, it could go to like this combination of a Z3 and this MMRB breakdown, or it could go as far as the Z2 or it could go as far as the uh, Z3. So there's room to believe in a downside trade here. And so you wanna frame in both directions, right? So if you were, if you were waiting for four to get long, you're not long yet. If you entered at three, you're now a little bit underwater. If you entered at two, you're at break even. There was none of the stops that were triggered yet. So you just got to track your own trade here. So Eddie, you're in at three. Uh, today I was, I waited for four, but you didn't have to, three was still in the money. I like three and seven.
three and seven is fine. But you got to get in not later than four, right? Four and seven is just the traditional entry. By this time, I don't care where your stop was. You got to be there. Anybody want to fight me? By this time, one, two, three. If you were weighing it, you would be like here. You, if you were like uh, seven and a way, you'd be there. If you were at seven and just follow in the PSAR dots, you know, at some point in your life, you're just going to say, you know, that's not bad. I mean, why not? This is where you can see now, if you had done the early sniper to get to no lose to here, you just leave that in place until the PSAR dots pick up. The Uwe exit would get you up to here and then across until such time as the Bollinger Band mean catches up. When I do that, when I'm using that, and if I'm watching this trade, I always give myself the authority to just say, you know what? I'm just going to go to a two bar low anyway. So sue me. You get to design the exit strategy that you got to live with. You might've picked the bottom of the dragon, or you might be just happy uh, with the, the peace art trail here. Good problem to have. Yeah, easily. Yeah, Bill. Yeah, you you do that in in uh, TC two thousand. You just put an alert on the PSR, and as the PSR keeps redrawing, it'll automatically adapt to it. Every broker platform will let you do that. Or get a new broker. Like I would take this as a sniper. When I see that thing run all the way up and then run all the way back down to close, I feel like, oh man, that's probably it. So uh, I might, I would probably move my sniper to here. I might even take that exit, but I, I think I like the sniper. So if I'm taking the uh, the sniper lock in, that would be the mechanical sniper. The um, if I'm doing the Uwe exit, I'm still down here. If I had taken that one where I said I'd be here, so I'd already be happy about that. But then I would have been sad when it came up to here. But then I'd have been happy again when it was down to here. So that's the life of a manic depressive for you. There's the PSAR dot flip. The aggressives will all will be one. Hey, Ken, can't we do, we can actually get short here, couldn't we? Yeah, you could. You always could. If you wanted. I like to give that up and just play for a kata two. We still got everything rising. We're well above the VWAP. I just like to stalk Kata 2s. That's not a Kata 2 to the downside. That's just an SSC. There's a Kata 2. Uh, I have a, a low all the way, where's my RL10? I have a low back here. I have the higher low. 
I have the RLXD. I take out the PSAR dot. Standard wrist box. No, it's a cot. It's not in the chop. It's north of the. Uh, it's north of the dragon, north of the river. The river is sloping up. I mean, it's. Yeah, I guess it's kind of going into the chop, but that thing didn't. It had uh, fifteen bars to fail, but it didn't. It's a one, two, three entry. Piece. So you can decide to take that or not. 10 is crossing the, the 10 is crossing. If we look at this thing closely, this is also considered the beginning of trending behavior on the second leg up. Why? Because you have price is out of the river. So this blue line here is the river price is out of the river. The RL30 is still out of the river, and now the RL10 is out of the river. That's the beginning of trending behavior that looks like this. And all I'm doing, if I'm using this as my exit, the big thick red line, and the yellow box is already my standard risk box, if I'm wrong on this, it's a 0 0.4. So I don't care. And I just look, I'm still well above, uh, I'm still well above the um, VWAP. And I haven't had a losing trade on this yet. This is the first effort at the chop. The 270 is rising. I'm well above this zone over here. This was a big gap up. Turns out this, this particular symbol was one of the stronger symbols in the stack. So it's kind of like, yeah, good question though. By this time, I am uh, four dots above, so my my way exit has to be locked in there, not later then. So could you could use the southern skin of the dragon as your moving stop that got you up there? I don't care. You could have been uh, you could have been way exit on this thing all the way. It was only ever going to be a point four loss anyhow. So that's what your Uwe exit would look like. The bottom of the dragon or even the Bollinger band meme would have looked like this. And then the PSAR would get you to there. Or you could just take the, you know, spine of the dragon or whatever. And then by this time, I'd be taking like a three bar low anyway and just lock that in. So you got to play that by feel. Decide how much of that is yours. GC asks, after the PSAR exit, if it shot back up, would I have re-entered at a break of the highest bar? Uh, yeah, probably. I don't know. Oh, oh, you mean after this one here? I'm sorry. Uh, GC, are you talking about after this PSAR exit, would I take this? No, because it has to break through the PSAR. That's why we take this one. It's got to have some proof. So now after this exit, it's this little 10 or 11 bars of sideways movement that did not fail. It did not fail down to the VWAP. I just look at that like uh, the dragon is digesting the gains, but he's not in a hurry to fail, right? So that's like failure to fail. So the point I want to make here is the Uwe exit uh, gives you gives you that you might have decided to pick up the PSR or the southern skin of the dragon at some point, you know, like that, you know, whatever. And then just take your little exit there like a man.
and that's going to be, you know, about half an hour. You can see that we're closing in. I could probably take that one also as a kata too, right? Is that fair? Except I think we're running out of daylight by that time. Maybe not. Yeah, and I think we ran out of that. That was that was like going into lunch. But I all I just wanted to show would have been, um, you know, getting started with a uh, with that breakout trade, and then what a kata two looks like in the formation, and then a reasonable, almost hydraulic stop. Here's one that works the other way. You have something like uh, mucking around in the opening. You know, that's about a dollar on Rivian. There's a PSAR, there's a, there's a, uh, like a dragon. There's a collapsing, whoops. There's a collapsing dragon in there somewhere. Probably another one here. Uh, here is a SSC at the yellow dot. Here's a Kata 2 at the uh, breakout. The rejection of the VWAP now makes this one collapsing dragon right here. This one is a collapsing dragon. That one is a Kata 2. This is your exit and a SSC if you want it. This one might've gotten you a Kata 2. This one certainly gets you a Kata 2 entry. So again, the collapsing dragon is the one you want. And then you can decide how early in the recovery after this horrible, bad, not good sell-off for the SSC or waiting for it to have one leg up, hold, and start a new one for the second one. The rejection of the VWAP was the tell. Collapsing dragon, collapsing dragon off of this low, a, a Kata 2, and you would get paid huge on collapsing dragons, not even close. That's how good that is. Okay, that's the lessons for today. Uh, let's look at the trades the guys had. Uh, this is Bill Sniper. Those those first two are negative by the way, not positive, <laughs> just to let you know. How, how did I know that? Because so that this, is what they are. Well, that's a, that thing is failing. So you're telling me you're not going short there or are you going long? Oh shit. This one works. Yeah. That, that first one works. My bad but I lose this, a half on the next one. Then this one is an effort to go short, but then it reverses. So you take a quick loss. Fine. Yep. Then you got a little, you waited for this to break down below here. You get that one. That's you, a quick you, you, you cash this one. Here's a plus. Here's the stop and reverse front running the PSAR. This is where I'd actually rather see you get that here 
with a stop like this. That's fine. And then this thing runs up. Uh, I'd have been really tempted to be out and then back in. But if you don't do that, at... but if you're just playing that, which is nice, you just take that and bingo. That's yeah, that was that probably 2.4. Although I think that might have been that better. Was three, One, that was 3.4. 3. 3. Yep. Yeah. I was uh, looking at Lowe's and um, XLE yeah. at the same time because that's what I did yesterday. So, so that's, was... that, that one is just right by the numbers. This one is one where, you know, if, if you're not looking at those other things, but concentrating, this is a really good, like a one, oh, yeah. two, three, that would be very tempting. And then you say, look, one, two, three, four, five. What are you doing? The... Nothing. Cut it. Yeah. The reversal at, uh, or the yeah. uh, Kata two at 10, 15 AM. Yeah. And then again at uh, 10, 30. Yeah, here's a cut at two. Here's a cut at two, and uh, probably there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I was watching three other symbols. So, apology accepted. Yeah. All right. Uh, let's see. All right, so this is uh, AAA. Get about a minus 0.8 on this thing. So here's the run up and then the fail. So we got to be thinking about this. And then this one, boy, do we want that short. Boy. And then on this, this is the Kata 2 entry short, and then it's not there. So this should be the cover for any of those shorts. And now this is a reasonable long shot. Quick exit, stop and reverse. He got paid. A good re-entry gets paid. Good re-entry, scratch. Good effort on the long side for an SSC. Micro loss. This is a good CD. Micro loss. SSC mouse error. So that should have paid off to here, but he at least gets the re-entry in. That's a good shot. This is good patience. Uh, minus 0.86. Uh, we got to get that move. But still, that's pretty good work all the way through. That's uh, nothing to be afraid of in there. Nothing to be upset about. Uh, David with, uh, this is also now uh, Home Depot. That's the same one you were looking at, Bill. So again, this, uh, uh, this one should be here as you correctly point out. Still, you got paid crushed it on the short this is a good second position because you you know get the breakdown below here and you're thinking this thing could be massive but it doesn't so you get out you try it you try it you get a little bit you try it and there just wasn't much and then you ran out of will and that reminds you why you got to get in the weight room and build up your cardio uh and keep replenishing your will but still plus two on that series Uh, this is also David. This is now XOP. That's the one that we just saw. He's got, he, he got three on that one. He got that early. He got the early breakout that I didn't on the WMB three. He gets paid, re-entered for a fractional loss. Very nice. Re I like the short. I like the stop and reverse. Got paid, got paid, scratch, fractional loss, fractional loss, scratch got paid uh, pretty good all the way through plus three. So that makes him plus 4.15 for the day on his little three excursions. Professional. Well done. Uh, my brother looking at a set of 50. This is the last two days. So this is a two-day effort, 4.2, the best one, worst one, minus one. That's good. 29 wins, four scratches, 17 losses. So that is about a uh, almost two to one. So yeah, point, you know, point 0.6 to point 0.3. So almost two to one. And then 2.5 .5 to one. So we'll call this one, uh, you know, three to two. 
times 2.5 gives you 7.5 7 to 2 or solves to about 3 to 1, almost 4 to 1. So that's a good payoff and win, win rate ratio. You're above 0.5 on expectancy. That's really good. And that's the curve you want. That's good production value. Those are the stats you want. Uh, three to two, almost almost two to one, and two point five to one. Yeah, that's we'll almost like a, that's almost like a five to one payoff ratio. The only thing that's making my losses a little bit bigger than the previous ones is I'm yeah. I'm you doing a lot of the trailing stop where I use point eight to one. Yep. Our trailing stop. Yeah. So you're keeping it. Yeah. You're just making a little bigger. That's fine though. But that simplifies your life. You're getting more opportunities. You're getting 25 yep. trades a day for crying out loud. I mean, nothing wrong with that. Yeah. Yep. And I'm, I'm <laughs> well, it was majority yesterday, but today I had, uh, I had 11 in the leaving by 10 30. Yeah. So, all right. So here's Wojcik on the, uh, is this the three minute? Yeah. This is the, WMB three test. This is the three minute Aussie and um, oversold uptick buys it cashes oversold uptick buys it cashes it oversold two upticks cashes it. I mean, need we say more? Uh, this is one you, you cannot let this thing come all the way back to here. Not no, uh, uh. You get you cash that one right there. Get done with it. Uh, uptick buys it, gets paid. On that kind of an excursion, man, I sure want to get out here instead of all the way back here. I don't want to give back more than half. Uh, yeah. Not so good, there, but 2.5 on that one. And then continuing <coughs> another two and a half. So this is a five day oversold uptick. Now notice he's got the colors coded so that when it upticks, it just pales a little bit. So he already knows buys it with a standard stop, gets paid, um, uptick, buys it, gets paid. I I'd like to get paid more there uh, than uptick, buys it, plus five for the day. Uh, proof of principle, I mean, you could have the five men Aussie, or the three minute Aussie with WMB. Yeah, my brother says you don't have to take a full one hour loss to prove that it wasn't good enough for you. All right, <clears throat> let's shift to um, the reports. Sideways normal, strong closing moves this week, risk on, abnormally good because we're above the 1.0. So this is abnormally good. So let's be mindful this thing can start rolling over now. Exposure in, in the ETF2 model goes from 20% to 40%. Things slowly getting better. The winning positions right now are all internationals, ILF, ILF, EWA, EWA, EPP is uh, Asia less Japan. That's the real estate. That's not doing too bad, I don't think. Energy has still been pretty good. Discre uh, staples have been pretty good. Really strong energy component right there. And that's still really good.
Uh, monthly, slowly improving. Strong support around 430. You can see that's the that's the congestion zone and it is voting to the upside. The PSAR flip is in sight. All time high at 480 is in sight. That was the congestion zone. It's now starting to work. Week and a half of goodies. The PSAR flipped happened on the weekly. We're well into the, this is kind of like why I like the three day. Look how orderly that downward move is. Found support. PSAR has flipped and nine strong days of movement to the upside. And then all we're looking for is this breakout above about 478. And then up we go. So this is the, so that's the no man's land it has to cross, but we're well above, we're well above that PSAR and the PSAR flip has occurred. Seeing the daily. Um, those are the winners right there. And uh, Latin America just crushing things. And uh, yeah, uh, energy. The Aussies are doing well with the commodities. Uh, finance, even though it's in the yellow, is actually making a pretty nice run compared to the rest of the stack. Um, the only reason it's below average is because energy in Latin America has been so amazing. Uh, this is why, this is why you like the you like the energy that we've held for the last three months. That's not going to hurt your long term retirement portfolio. And the last month has been pretty amazing. China and Treasury is just getting crushed, and it feels like clean energies put us on notice, uh, hasn't failed back yet. So that doesn't quite look like a dead cat bounce yet. I still think long-term that's a value play that we've got to be bullish on. Baby bull. Yeah, Chevron, still pretty good. Starting to see a weakening, the slightest of weakening here in the, um, in the oil and and the commodities are kind of peaking but still that's a that's a pretty amazing run in basic materials and energy holy smokes that's why you put it in the portfolio give it a chance you can see the strength and energy here crushing everything else and then the blended commodities with the energy and materials component and oil leaving everything else in the dust, not even close. Uh, Brazil and gold miners are in the green and white. That gives you this strategy. It was good, now great. Exploit new strength as new leaders emerge. The um, very good traders are things that are liquid and volatile. So that's the things that are in the ATR percentage column that are green. So that gives you uh, energy. Uh, semis. Uh, China and oil and gas exploration. Gold miners. Biotech. And uh, oil. Uh, daily report, nothing significant. Yeah, UNG is going to, is a good tactical play. Uh, Dow 30, lots of dojis. Only uh, Home Depot is still, even though it's getting smashed, uh, is still pretty good as a trader intraday. I just think that's the increased interest in the trading intraday tells me that guys are lining that up and are trying to get a hold of the value play, which is a rebound in Home Depot. It's the worst 
it's among the worst performer. It's the worst performer over the last one day and 10 days in the Dow. And that's just a great American company. So that thing's going to come roaring back. Just don't know when. Um, ETFs, handful of dojis, only treasuries on a uh, auto framer. Not much on the auto framer because we're so close. We made a new 10 day high. Um, I would be studying the heck out of this yellow zone trading, concentrating on the size of the uh, minimum range of the last 30 days. So you could start computing your intraday minimum manageable risk box, starting off with a third or a quarter of that. So like Tesla's minimum range is 24 bucks. So I'd either have a $6 or an $8 intraday stuff with that one. That's how you use that. Remember a six or $8 stop in Tesla and the range stat is 66 bucks. So there's a $10, I'm, I'm sorry, a 10 R win on a range stat day. If you're using that strategy of the range min as your manageable risk box, that just gives you an idea of how tradable that sucker is. Lots of summer and spring, no surprises. Take your pick at the 10 day and two day strength. Everything, the whole market recovering. Not a surprise to us. Here's where the turning point was back here. Third day off the bottom when the RL30 slope crossed its own 10 period moving average outside of Z1. That's, the, that's how you make the call of the turning point. What that means is instead of failing out of this congestion, instead it voted one leg up instead of failing. And that's what this little indicator tells you. Seems to be holding above the river right for now. Still has to prove that it can get to the previous high. And if it fails out of there next week, it's right back to here. Like, what would it take to do that? Oh, how about a nuke or a claim of a chemical weapon or bioweapon or more atrocities and a willingness of the West to get in there and start World War III against a nuclear power so we can sell uh, war materials for the military industrial complex? That'd be, that'd be a bad reason to go to war. Cliff is dominating in steel. Russell growth, energy and materials in the XL series, Latin America just dominating. Ooh. All right, that's everything we got for today. Uh, tomorrow, we'll take a look at the trade frames from Ken H. We have um, uh, that is going to be a recorded session tomorrow night. I've got a wedding to go to, I was informed. I was informed I'm going to a wedding. I don't know if you've ever had people inform you what you're going to do, but when I'm informed I'm going to do something, I, I do it. <laughs> so tomorrow is a, uh, uh, is a wedding. I will, as soon as I get back, I'll go in and record the solution. So don't stick around and wait for me, okay? And that's everything we got for today. And um, I shall see you tomorrow probably and then Sunday night at 8.30, okay? Uh, take, take, uh, take the rest of the day off, fellas, and we'll see you tomorrow.